Hi, and thank you for watching this midweek reflection for the 23rd of September. The lectionary readings address a broad range of topics and demonstrates the extensiveness of the biblical texts and the theological application thereof in all spheres of life, from political to personal. The abstract and thematic compilation of the scriptures universally complement each other and as a result, our way of perceiving the world. We just need to read and reflect on it. One such topic that is perhaps not immediately relevant to our present situation, but nonetheless important um, to think about it if we choose to consider it, is that of God's provision. It is very much a biblical idea. Manna from heaven meta-creationist ideas of material and immaterial resources such as wisdom and courage and that of God giving himself to the world. The topic has been somewhat neglected if not indeed resisted in response to the abuse by those who preach a prosperity gospel. However, even in that it reveals um, and indicates that the interpretation applied has a particular appeal in contexts of desperation and need. The contradiction within the idea is that there is a transactional method uh, employed, which again reveals some primal cultural essence uh, to transition from one state to another. One of my lecturers um, once commented that communism is great, but capitalism, as a matter of fact, is much more sustainable as it simply uh, corresponds more accurately to human nature. There is, however, a measure of relativism um, as individual desires for progression finds various expressions, but a certain truism remains that the present is boring, whilst the future is exciting. The past is fixed, but we can still exercise control over the future. Um, and this is in line with the search for truth and meaning. It is a lifelong pursuit and balancing act between the need for safety and chaos that offers the potential for achievement at the risk of suffering, either from distress or unhappiness. It appears to be the fate of our psyche. Um, as Psalm 119 verses 105 to 112 says, that a path is ahead of us and uncertainty is an ever-present reality. The law and order of God is like a lamp revealing this path, while the wicked would want to tempt us to veer into the chaos of lawlessness. And the temptation is um, actually quite alluring. In Proverbs 30 verse, verse 5 to 9, the writer, realizing that uh, the need to stay on the sure path of progression, prays in humility that his desire would not be for excessive riches that would make him forget and deny God's provision or that he would fall into poverty where he would need to steal and as a result, profane holiness. In both these instances, God's provision is substituted for self-provision, um, a chaotic desire that is never satisfied nor responsible. Dark forces would then eventually seek to undo the fabric of peaceful existence in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 6, we read where Jesus gives authority and control to his disciples over diseases and demons. They are sent on a journey, instructed to take no provision with them, but to trust in the hospitality of strangers. It is a radical belief in God's ordered kingdom, that progression towards achievement according to God's principles it offers true joy and fulfillment, um, which is a provision not as a transaction, but of interde interdependence. 
acknowledging our common humanity and need to extend grace. The implication is that we come to perceive the miraculous provision of God. Two such accounts come to my mind. The first is of St. Peter's Church in Sabi, Mumpumalanga. In the early days of the mining town, stone was quarried to build a bridge. But once the stone was inspected, it was realized that the stone would not be able to take the heavy load of the mining equipment. And so it was decided to build a church with the stone um, for which provision was also desperately required. Now, that may just be coincidental. But similarly, in around the 1940s, George McLeod, the founder of the Iona community uh, on Linders Farm in north of, north of England, uh, desperately needed timber and money to build the roof um, of the ancient abbey buildings. Materials were hard to get by because of the war. But then a Canadian ship struck a storm and jettisoned its cargo of lumber in the Atlantic. And the timber floated 80 miles, finally landing on the beach directly opposite Iona. Moreover, the planks were all of perfect length. I know of people that take this philological idea so seriously that they live by reserve timing. In other words, they, of their income, they only need 10% and therefore donate 90% of their income. This asks to surrender to God's order. Uh, and it takes a real mental shift, something of a chaotic nature even, towards an ordered life. But there is a better way, therefore, than just being better tomorrow than today. And I think it's that of a higher living. Amen.